So you say they want more kit bashing? Okay then. Yes, because since my last video on my Nurgle Orc kit bash did so well and had such a great response, I'm back here doing more kit bashing. As I said in that video, it is my favorite part of the hobby. And I asked at the end for people to reach out and tell me if they liked what I was doing so that I could do more and you did. So thank you to everyone who watched, liked and commented. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So what are we doing today? Well, it's probably obvious from again, what's in the description below, but also you might know if you follow me on my community page on YouTube I put a little poll out and asked all of you what of my current projects that I have on the go or I want to get started on do you want to see first and you voted for what's inside this little box so what's in the box I hear you cry well if you were listening clearly, you might have heard the jingle jangle of that old hammer metal. And you would be right, because this is my very small collection of old hammer. And that is because most of mine was sold by my mum when I went to university. Thanks, mum. All right, the first character I'm going to show you is pretty much the linchpin to the whole video. So we'll start with them, and it's my Metal Inquisitor. Yes, they are missing a left arm. No, I don't know where it is. And yeah, it doesn't matter because it's kit bashing. The next guy is this Metal Scout. Yes, he is also very cool, and I think he'd make a great part of an Inquisitorial retinue. So he's going in on the list. Also in there, I have some more Metal Scouts. This Heavy Scout this sniper dude and finally because this box has been always my potential palantine enforcers box i've got myself an arbitees and you know every red you needs a fishing but a demon host fishing <laughs> i mean yeah why not <laughs> anyway you've got the gist by now i am building my own inquisitor and inquisitorial retinue and you're probably thinking to yourself that's quite a lot of metal there hamilton is that a wise idea and no, it's not, <laughs> which is why I've brought quite a bit of plastic to the table to help me out. So first up, I bought myself a Death Watch upgrade sprue. Not only has it got loads of inquisitorial symbols, some cool shoulder pads, but also a left-handed sword, which will go with my Inquisitor, who's missing a left hand. So that was useful. And to go along with that, I'm going to use some of my Drukhari models in the form of my Witches and my Scourgers. And that's because they are very assassin-like. And also, Dan Abnick keeps talking about body gloves, and I believe believe that's what these are. Is that right, Dan? But finally, I do have one model which I've never known what to do with and I think this would be the perfect time to use them, which is my little mini knight. This guy, hello. He's got nothing better to do than sit inside this box because I've made my knight and you can't see him in it and I don't really want him walking around. He's just gonna get hurt around that massive thing. So I think he should make an appearance. You want to get out of the box and do something fun? He does. Now, that's enough of me chatting, but before we get started, I've got to do the YouTuber bit and ask you to like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications, all that good stuff. Comment if you want. And if you want to talk with me more, you can join us in our Discord channel. There'll be links in the show notes below. Without further ado, why don't we get started on kit bashing this Inquisitor and their retinue. So here's my little box of old hammer goodies. Let's open it up and have a look. Now, yes, I do want to do a whole retinue, but today we're going to focus on this guy, the main man himself, our Inquisitor. So with just their main body and the need for that left arm to be sorted, the first thing to do was to get out the old trusty bits box and see what we could find. Now, as ever, this took ages, but as I'm going through, I just kept putting parts next to the model, seeing anything that I liked, and then parceled it off into this nice little corner over here until I had a pile of really fun things. One of the first things that came to mind was this sword. Now, this is from my Crimson Court model and is a right arm, but what I liked about it the most was that not only did it fit the sort of model, but it also fit neatly into that sheath. So that had to stay because it made my brain go all fuzzy in a good way. So I kept it and I just tidied it up but obviously, as I said, it's a right arm model and I needed to get one for a left arm. So I went back to the Death Watch sprue and got the left-handed sword out of there. So I opened up the box, cut it out neatly, and then tidy it up in the best way I possibly can by just getting off those little nubbins. One of the things I liked a lot about this sword was the hilt. It had a really cool little skull detail. So I wanted to keep that, and as you can see, it fits really neatly against that socket joint, so that was cool. 
So once that was done, all I need to do was cut the Crimson Sword below the hilt and then just above the hilt on the Death Watch Sword and stick those two together. I thought it was actually looking pretty cool. I think the two together make quite an epic sword. Now the next thing to sort was the half ball joint the metal arm has to the original hand and so needed to make a hole in the hand to match. Using my drill bits I checked them against the joint and then I just drilled a hole in the wrist of the sword hand and glued it on. It's pretty simple. It's starting to look like a real model now. I was liking the way this was going so I was happy with that. Something else I found whilst I was looking through the bits box was this warp staff from the Shard Speaker of Selesh model I used in another one of my Necromunda kit bashes, and I thought that top part looked like a smoking gun flare effect. And so I cut that part off and after checking it a couple of times against the model, cutting away bits that didn't quite work, I then stuck it on. Which, I'm not going to lie, I thought was rather cool, particularly as this gunshot is the whole focus of the model's pose, and so it really was the proverbial cherry on the top, so I quite like that. Turning the model round, I wanted to change the back from a cloak to something more mechanical, as I felt the look of the model was lacking that part of the aesthetic, and I'm aiming my head for something much more grim, dark cyberpunk, you know, really getting into the eyes of... John Blanche and his artwork in that Inquisitor game. As such, I had to start off the process by following that artwork and from the Death Watch sprue I got out the Inquisitorial symbol and started looking at how that could fit as like a back piece to his head. I also thought it might just help give some verticality to a model that is very much left to right at the moment. So in order to build this, I needed a backpack. So in my bits box, I found a small power unit, which I think is from an Admech model. I'm not entirely sure. And I cut the vent head part off to create a top to what I felt maybe a green stuff molded backpack for the rest of it, which I could make by filling in and covering the rest of the hood of that metal cloak. I did then start green stuffing something by taking a blob of it and both using it to not only cover the folds of the hood, but also to give a fixing point for the parts I had just made. I then began to try and mould something more akin to a Space Marine power pack, but with the width of the hood, it just wasn't right. So I tried a more Terminator style with the double vent sections, but again, alas, even after some sanding and trimming, it just was looking really awful and comparative to the rest of the modeling, just not up to scratch. So I thought I'd go back and try something else. So what I went to was a classic Space Marine power pack and I started by butchering this to make something work here. First off, I cut off some of the smaller side vents and then stuck them onto the side of what I had created, which straight off gave it much better definition and direction, so that was great. I then trimmed the green stuff down and the power pack to get another of those top vents off to cover the rest of my abominable sculpting. <laughs> <laughs> Once I had that down, I felt it lacked a finisher, you know? So I found some flags that I had from my Eternus model, and I thought I could cut them down to make some purity seals that flow off the back. So after checking them against the model a few times, cutting them up to make it work, I then fitted them with glue to the base of the power pack. What? I liked about these the most is they added that third dimension to the model by filling in something in that third axis as everything was currently running left to right and up and down and now we had something that was very three-dimensional and yeah I think it was looking like a pretty decent model now but I wasn't done yet because now it's time for the ominous pencil. So why an ominous pencil and why am I putting it in front of this Inquisitor's head? Well, I was struggling of what to do with the head as I honestly just didn't like the one on the model. I had tried some from my bits box, including the obvious choice, which was an Admet one I found, but I felt it was exactly that obvious. I didn't quite like it. Also, I wanted to maybe use that for my Savant character later. So I decided to get the sketchbook out and try some things. 
As you can see here from my Procreate, I sketched out a couple of head options. First, the classic gothic hood, then some medicine beaky things. I then did an arachnid thing, and I like that, but I felt the orb was a bit too flat. So I drew this cylinder style diving bell thing and loved it. Yeah, even though it does look a bit like Lord Buckethead, I know, I went with it. And hence, the pencil. So to fit this on, I had to mark its height and then cut out part of it where the head sits already and then shave down some of the edges of it so that it would fit inside the collar. And once that was done though, it was just an easy gluing job before it was on. And now I can say with this model, not only have I kit bashed with plastic and metal, but also with timber, which I guess is nice. To add detail to it, I hole punched some plastic card to make some inlets, which I then stuck on there. Instead of just doing the one, I did a few of those around the model to just give it more of a cyberpunky feel. And then to add further detail, I took some cables from my old guitar, cut those up, and then stuck them in around the model to go from the power pack into the headpiece. Now I did a few of these, one going from the power pack under his throat bit, a couple going into the inlets, but in order to make uh, very good fixings for this, I did get out the pin vise and drill some holes into the metal and to the plastic so that I could get a really good base for the fitting so they just don't fall off. And all in all, I think they added quite a lot more to what is quite a simplified form for this helmet piece and just gave the model that extra just dimension, which I really liked. So I was pretty happy with it. And so all there was left to do was to move on to the base the buttery biscuit one, for which I wanted to make not one but two bases so that I could both have a small standard 28mm base to use to play in Necromunda with him, but also a larger 60mm heroic base mainly for display. So as such I cut out some cardboard circles to make this larger one and then I got the original 28mm base and put that in the centre and cut around that so I could fit them in. Now at first I thought that would fit within just two layers and as you can see here when I stuck it all together and put it in I realised it was sticking out. So I had to then cut the third layer as well to make it fit well. When I was doing that though I accidentally caught some of the finish off of the card and that exposed the corrugation which I thought looked really cool and so I distressed it a bit further to make it a look a lot like you know these steel sheets that are appearing underneath the base. And to top this off and give it more of a tile finish where it hasn't been ripped apart, I then scored into the card using a screwdriver just to add further detail. Now every base needs some skulls and I made a little pile of them on the side just by putting a little bit of glue to do another bit of cherry on the top to this base. And there we have it. Here he is, primed and ready. Well, apart from the edge of that base, which I do fix later. But after all of this, I thought it only fair to now move on to the painting phase. So for this model, I'm going for that grim, dark, Blanchitsu style of painting. So to start off, I work mainly with the dry brush in a stippling technique. Using at first dark browns, dark blues, and dark tans, and then finally a red to just all build up texture for not only the armor, but also for some of the cloth when I'm going over with the sort of browns and tans. Something I quite like about the red in particular is that it also adds just this little bit of rust effect to the model, which doesn't come out as strong as you're seeing right now when I add all the shades and washes on top which is what we do next, which is layer it all on and drench it all over the place in null oil, going over everything. Once I've left that to dry, I then come in with a heavily diluted Abaddon Black to enhance the shading, following the recesses under the armor lines, in the underside of arms, places that would be in shadow, like the gun undersides as well, and just making sure to go into the details particularly ones like those grills on the back of the backpack where they could just really do with being enhanced further. I do add to this later which I did forget to record which is going over all these shaded areas at the end in a Drucci violet, basically just following where it is just to cool them all down. 
After the shading, I go back to dry brushing, but now it's the metallics. First off, all over steel on all of the armor and metal bits. And then once I've done that, I go in with a gold, making sure to cover the elements I want, which was the gun, the helmet, and that inquisitorial symbol. I also did some layers of gold later with a standard brush and highlighted these with a bit of silver. Moving back to the cloak though, I continued the stippling effect with both a light tan and a dark tan. Starting with the dark and just getting it all over the places that I had missed earlier and then following up with a lighter tan on those raised surfaces just to enhance the highlight. I'm just making sure that that form of the cloak is really popping. Then it's back in with that black wash, but just in the areas of shadow, again, reinforcing those and adding further contrast to the model. I did notice that some of the highlights weren't as bright after I did that shading, so I did another pass on both the purity seals, as well as moving back onto the front of the model and parts of the clothes that I felt just needed to be punched up a little bit. Last up on this was getting out the seraphim sepia and putting that all over the cloth areas as well as letting that run onto the rest of the lower parts of the model just to add some more grime. And then the final touch with that is getting a sponge and sponging off the highlighted areas just to keep that grime in the depths of the recesses. For the base, it was a simple steel dry brush on the corrugated elements just to bring that metal effect out in those bits. And then on the tiled areas, it was a stippling of a cool tan which I then just put all over the place, and then a warm tan as well, all using the large dry brush and being fine about getting it on the skulls. And then finally, to tie it all together, I got a smaller brush, still dry on the palette, and using a paler stone color and slowly building that up to create a more unified texture and allowing it to get darker and rougher around the edges of where it breaks out to that metal. I then did edge the rim of the cardboard with some masking tape uh, and colour that in in black. I stole this idea from Peachy, he said that you could just use masking tape instead of green stuff and that was really great. And whilst I had the black out I also just went into the metal areas and added a bit more of distressing and texture to that. Then it's just, then it's just the standard non-oil all over the place. Just drip it in it and once that was done and covering everything and giving it a really good shade it was on to the seraphim sepia which i just splodged on a couple of splodges randomly just to add that extra grime for the smaller base i first needed to fill in the holes from the slotter base which i completely forgot to do earlier so reusing the masking tape trick i cut out some of those and stuck them down over the holes before i just treated the base as i did the larger one earlier now, I nearly forgot the skulls, so a quick highlight of Screaming Skull on those before moving on to the main event of this piece, the gun flare and the smoke. Now, for this, I use the same technique as most do for fire, which is a Yeriel yellow to start. I then did a Stroll Slayer orange, just to go next. Moving on to a Wild Rider red, and then finally a Mephiston red blending up as I go until I got to the smoke bit, which I did by just dry brushing on some greys, which I made by mixing a bad and black and white scar in different amounts as I went around. Finally then, putting a tiny little drop of white scar at the center of the muzzle, and then all that was left to do was paint the rims of both of the bases before putting them together so as to show off this guy in the grand reveal. Sorry, it's quick, Mom. So there he is, my Inquisitor, the first model in my new Ink 28 Inquisitorial Retinue. Now I will be making the rest of this retinue, I've already got some ideas for the demon host, but my next kit bash actually might relate to something that's coming to the channel soon, which is our adventures in Mordheim actual play using the Woofrup Warhammer Fantasy roleplay system, and that is going to be with Tay, you might know from our Table for Gangers, as well as my friend Fiona from my other show I do about D&D called the DM's Book Club, where we're going to be taking a witch hunter and a noble into Mordheim. 
Mordheim to find a vampire. But if you want to be ready to see that, then please do give us a subscribe so you'll know when that comes out. And as you know, giving us a like and putting a comment below and all those good things and sharing this around helps our channel grow. And I'd love to hear from you, hear your thoughts on this and any ideas you have to add to this retinue. So really, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening and watching, and I hope to see you next time. In the meantime, you stay safe out there in the other hive. Bye, everyone.